Hi guys, in this tutorial we'll be giving the RE1100 Gundam Mark III a custom paint job. All of the parts for the Gundam Mark III will be painted off the runners in like a production line style. Hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a good idea of what it's like to paint multiple parts at the same time. This is going to be a fairly long video guys. So go grab yourself a nice hot drink and we'll get started. Gumpler kits come in many parts and I find it easier to separate them into different sections like head, body, legs and so on. I picked up some barbecue skewers from my local supermarket. These are absolutely perfect for holding the parts on. I make a stand for the barbecue skews, just sellotaping some sheets of cardboard together. I use polystyrene also, but it can get quite messy. Bandai manuals are absolutely fantastic. They're easy to follow instructions on how to build the kit. They separate each section into separate parts, which makes it much more easier when it comes to storing your parts. I cut the parts off the runners, leaving big nubs behind. If you cut too close to the part, you risk indenting the plastic or damaging it. Cut the part cleanly now and don't run the risk of damaging the plastic. Scraping any excess plastic that's left behind from the nub. I learned a valuable lesson about three years ago when in an accident with a scalpel I went to hospital and I needed stitches. What I do now is make sure that I change the blade every single time I work on a new kit. It enables me to work effortlessly scraping away at the parts and also I don't have to put as much pressure on which could cause your hand to slip and then injure yourself. Here you can see how effortless it should be using a new blade to remove a mould line. I take extra care with the outer armour parts. I make sure that any areas where there is nubs is super smooth going in with 1000 grit sandpaper and then finishing it off with a buff stick. I use Walder white tack to hold the parts on. This has got a really great adhesion, but you can use general blue tack. I have all the parts for the Mark III put into separate holders. This is to enable me to paint one colour at a time. So if I was working on red for example, I could paint the feet in red, go on to another section and paint that red also. It's to save time. I have the body section in front of me, but 
here I'm just taking off all the individual parts that are eventually going to be grey and leaving the other parts that are to be painted in a metallic colour for afterwards. I always wear a mask whilst airbrushing. It's really important to protect yourself from the atomised paint, especially the more harmful lacquer paints. I spray the primer in light coats and always keep the airbrush moving. All the parts that will eventually be red are pre-shaded using Glow Model M Mahogany. I'm also using my brand new airbrush. It's the Awata CMB. It's an absolutely fantastic airbrush and it's designed to get the most minute detail down. I dilute the Glow Model Air one to one with airbrush thinner. And as you can see here, I'm able to get really thin lines. I wouldn't recommend this airbrush if you're just getting into airbrushing, but if you've been airbrushing for a while and you want some of the most fine details you can get with any airbrush, I highly recommend it. I wanted subtle shading to show through on the Mark III, but if you want a more dramatic shading effect, you can change the paint from mahogany to a dark brown, or even more extreme, using black. Whilst pre-shading, I try to use the natural angle of the part to find the line that I want to paint. going over the pre-shaded parts with the Leo Model Air Scarlet Red and as you can see the pre-shading is very subtle.
All the outer armour parts that are due to be grey are given a base coat of Model Air Dark Sea Grey. All the parts will eventually be chrome need a base colour of gloss base primer from our clad. The Alclad gloss black base goes down super smooth leaving a perfect finish for the chrome to be sprayed onto afterwards. Here's another look at the production line and as you can see I've finished all the red parts and the grey parts. This is like pre-shading. What I do is leave some of the dark sea grey behind in all the recessed areas, but spray the lighter colour on the topmost raised surfaces. Here you'll see the effect illustrated a little more clearly. I'm trying to work on one tiny section at a time, airbrushing a little paint and then moving on to the next section, just leaving a little bit of that dark sea grey behind.
I'm using Alclad's Chrome for Plastic here guys and this is an absolutely fantastic paint. The shine develops straight away and as you can see it's super reflective and looks very realistic. Alclad's bright silver candy base is different than the normal Alclad's. This can be painted on raw plastic, unprimed. You don't see the effect of the bright silver candy base for about an hour. As the carrier evaporates, the shine develops. Here I'm adding more interest to the gun boy, just adding some paint chips. It'll help some of the panels pop out. All the parts now have been finished and it's time to put them in the separate tubs ready for assembly. just going to be adding a panel line wash to help make the parts pop.
as you can see, giving a wash to the model is very simple to do and it gives it a lot more dimension. Cleanup's easily done with a cotton bud. I know the lighting in this video is not the best. I've just recently upgraded the lighting in my loft so hopefully future videos will look clearer. But I still hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please tick on the like button. And also share this video among friends. And thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you in the next one.